All right, hello everyone. We are going to be making um, some Remembrance Day art. It is almost November and in Canada we have Remembrance Day. So, uh, and at the school that I work at, we have a Remembrance Day art competition. So I figured we would get together and make a new piece of art. Um, I cannot take credit for this art piece. I'm taking inspiration from a colleague. So thank you, Mrs. Klemek for helping me make this video. Um, and this is actually the first time that I'll be making this type of art. And I think it's pretty cool. So what you're gonna need is a piece of watercolor paper. Um, you'll need some regular paper too, but you're also going to need uh, some paint brushes because we are going to be working with, not watercolor, but we're gonna be working with um, some washable markers. You'll need a Sharpie marker and a pencil and a ballpoint pen. Um, that will be for something kind of new, a little bit different, um, but we'll check it out. Okay, so what this is going to look like is we are going to have, let me just move my supplies. Um, we're going to have a soldier in the bottom right hand side, okay, who's kneeling, because um, Remembrance Day is remembering soldiers that have died in different wars that Canada took place in. On the left, we're gonna have some poppies because poppies are for, uh, they're the symbol of remembrance. There was a poem written by Lieutenant John McRae about uh, Flanders fields where the poppies grow between the crosses, row on row, that sort of thing. And then we will have um, a plane here just as another symbol of people who have served in different parts of the armed forces. So. We are going to start by taking a look at our foreground, middle ground, and background. So that's what the pencil can be for. My pencil isn't too sharp, but I have chosen that on purpose, which uh, I will show you why a not so sharp pencil will work nicely um, in the later part of this video. But we're gonna start by making uh, two different lines and they can be a bit curvy all the way across. So here's line number one, okay just to determine what the foreground will look like. And then line number two, to get our middle ground and our background. All right. Now you might wanna draw these a little bit further down, but for today, these will do just fine. Now, the reason that um, what we're doing is we will be painting this. We have um, brushes, you could use watercolor brushes. These are synthetic, um, but they'll do the trick today. Um, washable marker is water-based, which means it's gonna flow on our watercolor paper really nice. Now Sharpie is oil-based, permanent marker is oil-based, so the water is not gonna move it around. So the pieces that we don't want to move around, we're gonna draw first with our Sharpie, okay? So um, let's get started by taking a look at where our soldier is going to go and where our plane is going to go. Now to make things simple, I have actually printed off um, a soldier silhouette. So this will help me put this back onto where I want on the watercolor paper. And the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm actually going to do a quick trace. Now I know the point of this activity, you're kind of like, oh, isn't that cheating? Well, the point of this activity is to learn about foreground, middle ground, and background, and to get a chance to do a bit of painting. So we're gonna fast forward a bit of the drawing sketching portion by uh, seeing how we can get this guy onto our paper as fast as possible. So the fastest way that I can think to do this is to do a graphite technique, and that's where you need your pen and your pencil, because what you're gonna do is you're going to flip this silhouette over, and you are going to fill the entire silhouette with your the graphite of your pencil, which is why a dull pencil will be helpful. So I'm gonna do this, and don't be shy. over it too because any white spot is where there isn't graphite and you need there to be graphite so that it will go onto uh, your watercolor page so nothing on the watercolor page but now I'm gonna place my soldier where I want him not to on the right third here I don't want to press too hard because the graphite is gonna go onto my paper and that's where my ballpoint pen comes in nice because um, ballpoint, you have to press a little bit. So when I trace this guy on, I'm gonna be pressing the graphite onto the watercolor paper. So I'm gonna draw onto this silhouette. Now 
And whatever you do, do not, do not <laughs> take your paper off because it will be hard to finish if you are only part way. And it might not look perfect because I'm going pretty fast here. You can go slow, but we can touch anything up because it's just pencil. And we'll do the Sharpie after. Now I want to get every outline in. Might be tough to remember all of them because we don't really see what's happening on the other side. That's okay. Whoops. Got these inside lines, and the details. There. I'll double check that I have everything, but I think, ah, ta-da, look at that. I have my soldier now onto my watercolor paper, which is pretty nice. Good. Thank you, graphite trick. You can now put this away, whoops. And now let's take a look at where our plane is gonna go. So we're gonna do the same thing. I printed out a, this is a World War II plane, so some of you might be upset because I think that this soldier is not wearing World War II um, attire, and this plane is, so um, forgive me in advance, but I'd like the wing to be up towards the top and then over. I'd kind of like this to be directly diagonal from the, the soldier's hat, or not hat, his helmet, um, because I'm going to have poppies that are going to grow here. And that makes one, two, three, three items because art will often look really nice in odd numbers. So uh, let's, uh, let's flip this over and get some graphite. Now remember, you only need graphite where the image is. So I don't need to do the whole page, just where the plane is going to be. Even there, I'm doing a lot more than I probably need to. And make sure it's dark enough. And you can sharpen your pencil later. Good, that will be a plane. So I'm gonna flip this over. Very nice, all right. So let's see where we want this guy. images with um, this oil-based marker. Don't get any on your clothes, okay? So I'm going to start by outlining.
those there. Good. And now once you've done this, you're going to color this guy in, but you want to try and stay parallel to the outlined lines. This is one mistake that people make with coloring, specifically with coloring with marker all the time, is that if you do not go in line with the lines that you're coloring in, it can sometimes get really messy. So don't color, don't color this way if the outside lines are going this way. Now you might have a bit of overlap in the middle parts like here but then just pick up where the closest line is. Now I know we're really excited to paint, but um, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna actually wanna get these poppies in here because um, they are above, they're the most foreground. So if they are the most foreground, I cannot paint my background over top of my poppies. So um, with your poppies, you're gonna need your pencil again and poppies are pretty simple to draw. So we're gonna go for freehand. And we're gonna start to kind of pick where they will be. I'm gonna do three. I'm gonna do one that's kind of here, and one right below the wing, and then one right below that. And also picking differently, like I said odd numbers works really well, so we'll do three poppies. And different sizes are also gonna help us here, just give us a little bit more uh, intrigue for what this looks like. So I'm gonna start by kind of just kind of like your classic flower curves, but they can be a bit messier because poppies aren't the most symmetrical flower. There, and it's kind of rugged, and we kind of do that on purpose because war is kind of rugged, so it gives it a bit of a, a rugged look. Okay, let's do one more here this one's gonna be smaller they're all kind of and they're kind of oval so oval shape and then the last one we're gonna do right under here this one's the teeny tiniest of them all there we go and then we can get some stems going down and give them the stems a bit of, a bit of life here there the inside we could do something kind of interesting where they kind of have these triangles that come out from inside. You want to give. And don't be too perfect with them, they're kind of messy. They're war flowers. Now the outlines of these just like our big figures here, we do not want to move. So what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna try and eliminate this, this um, middle ground line here with my eraser. Good thing I didn't draw too hard because these poppies, oh, now you can see it just popped in front of our middle ground and maybe you have to do a bit of touch up. It's okay. Now, make sure these stems go all the way inside. Now inside the, um, the poppy are normally like some white seeds. So one way that you can make sure you get some of those is actually by kind of drawing a little circle. We're just making sure that there is something in there. And then if we kind of cross it like this, I know it looks really symmetrical right here, but what we'll do is we'll leave these sections white We'll try at least. 
maybe even even if you just have a bit it shows just a little bit of pop There. It might look a little bit messy, but you know, honestly, that's okay. This one is a little bit too symmetrical. Maybe just fix it a little bit. So this one's a little bit too. This needs some white specks in there. These ones are just a little bit too rectangular, but that's okay. Because uh, you know what, the next step is going to be making sure that we are going to paint these nicely. So that's when we want to get out our colors. We're going to use three colors. And you can get paint brushes. A big one is sometimes nice and a small one. Um, if you only have one, that's okay too. But we pick these colors because they're kind of, well red is for the poppy. Because um, that's the color of poppies. All oh, poppies have different colors. And then um, these dark colors, gray and black, kind of set the tone for Remembrance Day because it's kind of a somber holiday. So um, we'll make sure that we use that. So um, let's start by painting our poppies. And we're going to do that because um, we do not want to have to paint over any background stuff and we can paint around our red poppies pretty nicely. Now, you can either pull out or pull in with um, this technique. And for this one, I'm gonna show you the, the pull in here on this big um, poppy. But what I'm gonna do is I'm really gonna get not a thick outline, but just a lot of ink in this outline. Cause the more ink there is, the more I can pull in to my poppy. Notice it goes over the Sharpie like nothing because the Sharpie is not water-based. Oh, that's thick. Whoops. There you go. Make sure there's just a lot of ink here, which is when the magic is going to happen. Now, this watercolor paper is not very thick. It's kind of thin. So... Uh, the thicker it is, the better it will absorb some of this stuff, but I can start to pull in my colors. Whoops, make sure you go in the lines. And you don't want it to look like you outlined it. So try and get lots of that, pull it in. You can even see it start to disappear because that's your paint. Get a bit more water if you need. Yeah, it's starting to come in nice, good. We're going to highlight um, our foreground and our middle ground and our background and they're going to get lighter as we go so we'll use the gray later but the black is going to make this as dark as possible okay now you have to use a lot of black because if you notice about Crayola black it's actually just a really dark blue so what's going to happen is it's going to be like hey that's blue and it's like I know so we need to add more so that it looks like it's black and then in the middle we're going to do gray and a bit of black just so it's like a darker gray and then the top will be just gray. So let's just show you what this might look like here. Take off the cap maybe. And I'm gonna do a pretty thick line here and get all the way in on this um, poppy. Although I will not want to paint it. Yeah, 
You have to do it pretty soon after or else it will dry. So that's why I did each poppy. I did one and then I painted it right away. And then here I'm gonna do this and then I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get my big brush out for this one. can start to bring this down like a party bring it down be careful around the poppies whoops and bring it all the way in all the way down and get that so it kind of gets a bit of a gradient effect that it's close closest to the line is darkest So make sure that you get close to the poppy. No. Okay, so next we're gonna do gray. All right. Now we do want lots of gray on this one. Now the top is the least important because I have to, uh, it's okay if it's a little bit white up there. But get your gray marker. And you can touch up as you need, but you should have three decently different sections. There you go.